This segment is brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Good morning, I'm Frank Chafin. This is Around Kansas. You may recall that we were going to uh, visit opera houses all around this great state of Kansas. We started at the Jayhawk Theater, which is in restoration. Well, a lot of opera houses around the state have been restored. Some of them didn't really have to be restored, and one of those is in Waterville. Now, Waterville itself was established back in 1868, and they established it because, obviously, uh, it was a water stop for the railroad that went through there, and it was also named after a town in Maine, also called Waterville. Well, of course, back in the 1860s, 70s, 80s, that's when, of course, there were many opera houses that sprung up across the state of Kansas, and, and that was the form of entertainment that there was at that time. Well, the Waterville Opera House is one of the more spectacular ones. And uh, let me digress here a little bit. My wife Linda and I were part of the Dale Easton Players for many years, and we were invited to play at the Waterville Opera House a couple of times. We did The Drunkard once, and then we took one of our musicals called The Shaboom Boy there. And let me tell you, when we were in town, we were, we were treated like uh, visiting rock stars or something. Uh, and it was a fun place to play. Now, let me tell you, the opera house itself, you walk up seven and a half steps into this opera house. It's all nice and white, and you walk in, and you see a wonderful ceiling in there. It's a flocked ceiling and a huge sandal chandelier right in the middle. And then, of course, all the seatings, and then a big stage area. Well, the acoustics in there are wonderful because the people that built the opera house made the corners rounded in there. So the acoustics just kind of roll all around in there. Uh, the Waterville Opera House uh, is not one that was transformed into a movie house. It has remained an opera house for over 100 years. It was built in 1904. Yeah, long time ago. Well, during the summer, there are several groups that still visit there. There's you know, a lot of traveling groups, almost like it was back uh, uh, between the 1860s and the 1920s. Now, again, I had an aunt uh, that traveled with the Ted North Players and played the, the Opera House many, many years ago, long before I was born. But anyway, also uh, in Waterville, across the street from the Opera House, is a restored hotel. The Waterville Hotel, and it's wonderful to walk around in there and, and look at uh, the rooms the way they were. And then there's a restaurant there that has a fantastic menu. So if you go to Waterville for a show, be sure to go over to the hotel and see it too, and then have dinner in the wonderful restaurant. You can find out more about the uh, performance schedules. Uh, you can Google them, the Waterville Opera House, and make sure it's Waterville, Kansas, because otherwise you'll get Waterville, Maine, and I don't think they have an opera house. So anyway, be sure to stop at the Waterville Opera House, and again, like I say, we're going to be looking at other opera houses all around this great state of Kansas. So for now, this is Frank Chafin saying, hey, join me on renradio.net for the oldies every Saturday from 11 to 2, oldies of the 50s and 60s, renradio.net. And until then, I'll see you somewhere around Kansas. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org.